Good day and welcome to the April edition of what we are sowing and planting this month. It's quite a busy month, not quite as busy for us as March because we try to get ahead with our polytunnel, but it's still a pretty busy month. Most of what is being sown is going to be again in the polytunnel, but there are quite a few things now because the soil is beginning to heat up that little bit, even though we've just had another cold snap. Because the soil is beginning to heat up, some of these are going to be direct sown. So I'll let you know as I go through. First of all, beetroot. We were sent these red crown by Shaz, the lovely packet. Thank you for that, Shaz. And also have D. Chioggia. Now, D. Chioggia are a beetroot we grew a couple of years ago and really do like. It has red and white concentric circles and is fabulous raw and is also fabulous cooked. So I do recommend De Chioggia. It grew very, very well for us. We do have some, those are going to be sown direct. We do have some modular sown beetroot, which are growing well. They were sown last month and they will be going out in a couple of weeks time. The temperature, when I looked at the weather forecast a short while ago, it did say that after these few cold days that we are having, that hopefully come to an end today, the temperature at night should be generally around four degrees or more. So fingers crossed. Thinking forward to next year, we have some Savoy Cabbage January King that we're going to be sowing. Hopefully, these will start harvesting from November through to February time for us. Other brassicas that we're doing are a Calabrese green sprouting, which I am hoping will do well for us this year. I expect to be harvesting this around sort of August, September time, if all goes well. It's a, it's a challenge for me. I've never grown Calabrese to a proper head, if you like. It's always, for me, turned out to be something like a broccoli rave, where it goes to seed really quickly and is quite spindly. So I've never got the, the tight head from a Calabrese that I've grown that um, has been then edible. So fingers crossed on that. One thing that we adore is a spinach beet called Charred White Silver. This is Charred White Silver 2. The reason that we like this Charred White is because it has really thick leaves. The stems are also quite thick and they're white and they're fabulous if just braised in a lovely vegetable stock in the oven. They're absolutely glorious. But the leaf is just fantastic. It is quite robust and it works really well in things like Spanakopita. So fingers crossed for those. Sometimes you'll see a white in, um, what do you call it? The rainbow char that you get, there'll be a white. This one has a thicker stem and a thicker leaf to it. So looking forward to that. Oregano. I cleared the paths on our plot the other day and I thought it'd be lovely to have some herbs and maybe some chamomile around the paths. We already have some oregano growing uh, on a path, on a block of the path just next to the shed. I'm going to be sowing some of these direct and others in the polytunnel in a seed tray. See which do best. I've been told that oregano is best grown in situ, but let's see. Moving on, Hamburg rooted parsley. This is a parsnip that I believe you can also use the leaves like a parsley. Never grown it before. Rene sent us these seeds, so thank you very much, Rene. 
they are going to be direct sown. Yeah, so sorry, the spinach beet is being direct sown and the, did I mention, the cabbage and the calabrese will be sown in seed drays. This is going to be direct sown in our slightly higher edge bed. It is actually a raised bed, but that will be going in shortly. Let's just talk a little bit about flowers. I finally got the flower border sorted on the plot and I'm really pleased about that. I have decided to dig it because we have little cardboard and little chance at the moment because of the current situation of getting any compost from Ealing riding stables. So I dug the new flower bed the other day. We've already got some plants that will be going in there, including the oxide daisy that I took out from our now vacated plot a couple of weeks back. We've also got some pulmonaria and some sedum, various different plants. Yeah, what we're hoping for is to grow the taller ones like the oxide daisy at the shed side of that bed and then have plants that are not so high on the past side of that bed. That way, hopefully, we'll have a little sweep of, of height as it goes across the bed. One thing I absolutely adore is honesty. Honesty in every way. Um, white honesty, and we also have some purple honesty. These are going to be sown in trays in the polytunnel, and they will flower next year. So they're a hardy biennial. They won't flower this year, but it's good to get them in. I adore them. We had a good lot last year and sold them all at Hanwell Carnival, and I forgot to keep some back for, for us, but hey-ho, never mind. Whilst we were at Kew one day, um, some coneflower seeds had fallen onto the path, and I picked them up, and we're going to be sowing those, so I'm looking forward to them. The cone flowers are the ones sort of like with a pin cushion in the middle and then the flowers sort of petals spray back from that. Love them, absolutely love them. Vivi gave us a few seeds that she had been given of this butterfly pea, Thai double blue. It has a fantastic Latin name, Clitoria ternatia. So the Clitoria ternatia will be being sown. It's on Baker Creek Heirloom Seeds, looking forward to seeing how that does. And then Sandy also sent us some Nicotiana seeds. Now these are called Lavender Cloud. Now I have read that Nicotiana do ward off cabbage white butterflies. I'm not sure if it's a particular variety that does that, but I'm hoping that these, these will. Looking forward to them. They're from the Hudson Valley Seed Company, which our American subscribers will also know well. Then Elizabeth, uh, who's in Lawrenceville, sent us these Roselle seeds. Let me just fold that up. Look at that. Can you see that plant? Isn't that glorious? Elizabeth had these in her garden last year and um, posted on Planet Vegetaria a picture of her garden. And these were just resplendent in two of her borders. I had no idea what the plant was, so I obviously asked. And they are Roselle. So thank you very much for the Roselle seeds, Elizabeth. Very, very much looking forward to growing those. As I am with this one. This is a sword bean. There's the bean. It looks like a broad bean, um, but with a, it seems to have quite a sort of thick, much thicker and harder pod than a broad bean. I don't think it's edible. I'm just growing it for the fun of it. And apparently it grows pretty tall. Can't see exactly how. It's also called the jack bean. So yeah, I think that's going to grow pretty tall. Need to make sure there's plenty of space for that. Now coming on to two families of plants, which 
we use an awful lot of. Firstly, let's talk about beans. Being vegetarian, we eat a lot of beans. We love beans in their pods, but more importantly for us, we like drying the beans and keeping them or freezing them demi-sec. That means semi-dried. So, excuse me, some of these beans, in fact, all of these beans I know should grow well where we are. One is a slight risk. I'm not really risking many things this year because we want to make sure, hopefully as long as we can get to our allotments, that what we grow is something we're going to eat. My risky thing, because I've never grown it before, and again, Vivi gave me some of these seeds from a subscriber that sent them to her, is pole beans. This is an asparagus bean, or it's called asparagus bean. Pole beans in America are climbing beans. So we call them climbing beans in the UK. They're called pole beans in America because they climb up poles. This asparagus bean is like a French bean. We, um, it's called yard long, and I think that gives you an indication as to the length of the actual pod. It says here that the length of the pod should be picked when it's 45 centimetres or 18 inches long, but they can grow much, much bigger than that. We did see some like this when we were in Bali many years ago, and they were an absolutely delicious bean. I do think Essayon's family garden has been growing these as well, or maybe a different variety, but I'm looking forward to seeing how they do. Now coming on to beans that we know grow well in our area or in our zone. Gigante's butter beans. They have become a mainstay for us. We got some a few years ago, put them in the ground, they grew really well and we have grown them ever since, save seed and grown them. Last year we had a bit of a challenge with our growing because as you may have seen, I put a big bean arch up and also grew our cheeky prince squash up the bean arch. Unfortunately, the beans did so well that the leaves created a sail a wall of green if you like and when the wind hit the bean arch it took the whole bean arch down we harvested what we could and that was a really decent harvest we've obviously saved some seeds what did happen is we have now vacated that plot but during the time that we've been doing our new plot and vacating the old plot I was about to dig out some of the beans, basically so that the new tenant had clear ground. And I noticed that the roots were still alive and still growing. This is maybe about six weeks ago. Since then, I told the new tenant and um, she said, oh, that's great. Let's leave them and see what happens. And since then, a few green shoots have started coming from the base of where the, the plant grew from last year. So it could be a matter that those have overwintered really well. Let's see, it's been quite a mild winter. You may remember we tried to overwinter some runner bean plants a few years ago. In the same way as dahlias, because I read an article that runner beans, like dahlias, could be overwintered. You take them up, you wrap them up, you then let them dry and put them away, and then when you replant them, they'll grow again. That didn't happen for us. It didn't happen at all. But hey, that doesn't really matter. We're growing Borlotto Lamont. Now, most of our beans are climbing beans. There's a couple of dwarf beans here, but most of them are climbing. The reason I like climbing beans is I think you get at least 50% or more on a climbing bean than you would on a bush bean. But some bush beans are lovely to have and that's why we're growing two varieties this year. But Bolotti Lamon, um, or Bolotti beans, this is Lamon variety, is something that we grow every year. We It freezes really well, it dries really well. 
when we are drying beans now, we do use the method that Vivi showed, which is letting the beans dry and then putting them in the freezer for three days because that will kill any um, bee, my bean fly that is in it. So that's a, that's a big issue, it, particularly in the UK, if you want to dry your beans, bean fly do get in there quite early. And when you take out the beans from beans that you've dried yourself, you could find them with little holes. And that's because the bean fly has come out, uh, has made it where has chewed its way out. We don't like that. So we've put them in the freezer. We also demi sec freeze a lot of our beans. So we freeze them when they're semi dry. So all of the beans so far, we don't eat in the pod. They're, they are purely for drying and harvesting and storing. That's the important thing for us. Two pod beans, which we are going to be growing this year. Let me find them. In fact, there's more than two. We have a Madeira Maroon really fantastic we got some seeds from the seed detective when he came and gave us a talk a couple of years ago at the allotment they were fabulous beans richard and i really really liked them we saved the seed and the second year when we grew them we put them in an area and there was some clover in the compost which i didn't realize clover and beans do not go well together and clover can cause mosaic virus in beans so that year, all of our climbing beans that were in that bed where the compost had clover in it, they grew to about three foot and then just went straight for Australia. They literally just turned down and started growing down. Disaster. And the leaf becomes really skeletal and mosaic-like. But we, uh, we got these from the Heritage Seed Library, and I was really pleased to see that the seed detective is now... A seed guardian at the Heritage Seed Library, so I'm sure these are, are from him. Canadian and Mountaineer White Half Runner. Both of those are beans to be eaten in the pod. Let's go on to oh, this one. Patricia from Sew and Grow. That's S-E-W and Grow, if you have a look at Sew and Grow on Facebook. Sent us Blue Lake, again, a climbing bean. Now these beans, like all beans, but particularly these beans can be used in their pod, but they can also be used um, as a drying bean. So we're going to be doing that. Final climbing bean. You may remember we did runners Shaz's runners last month and we're also doing some lazy housewife that came from Jackie those were sown in pots at the very end of March I think only about three or four days ago so those are climbers this is another climber and some of you may know this again from Vivi's channel Coco Sophie now this is the sister bean if you like to Coco de Pampol but this is a climbing bean where the Coco de Bampol is not. So looking forward to growing those for the first year. Coco de Pampol, lovely bean, absolutely lovely bean to be eaten as a bean rather than a pod. Yeah, they grew well for us last year. I saved the seed, I put them away. And then when I came to do a stew a few weeks ago, I used the seed that I meant to grow with this year. I did say about this to a friend of mine and uh, the friend has sent me some Coco de Pampol from France. So I will look forward to growing these. Some of these are also going to Jane Kelly of Jane's allotment as I promised her some. So they will be winging their way to Jane very shortly. Finally, bush bean, another bush bean, just like the um, Coco de Pampol is a bush bean. 
Rock and Core. Fabulous, waxy, pod bean, yellow, lovely, delicious, yum. That's all I'm going to say. Then, finally, let's come to the other family of vegetables, which is really important in our diet, and that's squash and pumpkins. We eat a lot of squash and pumpkins and um, we love them. They make great soups, they're fantastic roasted and they're just so versatile in so many things. If you've been following our channel for a while, you will know that we have been trying to hybridise a cross that I cross-pollinated between an Uchiki curry and a crown prince. So an Uchiki curry squash and a crown prince pumpkin. We call it the Cheeky Prince. The seed from that generation was shared last year and has done really well around the world for quite a few people. One is still growing with um, Hilltop Farm in Australia at the moment and Jay is going to be sending us seeds from his because they are really fantastic. The other person that grew them really really well was Kelly of Kelly's Kitchen Garden and I'm sure you've seen her talk about them on her channel. Chris in the US from ACS channel, hers grew really well. And then we had one that was really quite a late bloomer. After harvesting, it immediately ripened over a week from being a sort of pale, dusky pink to a deep pur purple, deep orange. So really pleased with the way that that did. So what we have done, Kelly saved seeds, Chris sent her seed and say, sent it to us Richard and Paul, and then we had our seed as well. Now Kelly's seed, Chris's seed and ours have been kept separate, but Kelly at Kelly's Kitchen Garden and ourselves, we have collaborated, I hate that word collaborated, but we're doing this thing together with Chris, and we have sent seeds out to places all around the world again. So this is another generation of us trying to hybridize the Cheeky Prince. So this year we will be growing Kelly's, because Kelly sent us hers. We will be growing Chris's, because we have Chris's, and we'll be growing our saved seed. So this is all seed that was saved from 2019 harvests, and we'll be growing it this year. These will all be grown on an area of our new plot. I think it's actually going to be in pots on the vinyl for various reasons because of how challenging this year is at the moment. So fingers crossed on those. As long as I do get some compost, which I'm waiting to, to receive, those will go onto the vinyl. These others that we have been sent will be going on to another person's plot who said that we can grow these where they have space on their plot. From Sandy again, I think we got Lumina Pumpkin Maxima. It'd be good to see how that does. Then from Ronna up in um, the Isle of Arran, we have um, Moscata. And then from Jerry at So Enchanted, that's S-O-W, Enchanted, S-O-W, Enchanted. Do have a look at her Facebook page, So Enchanted. We have Blue Hubbard seeds. Always wanted to grow Blue Hubbard. So be interesting to see how those all do. At our community garden, we are going to be growing more cheeky prints there in a separate pumpkin patch. So what we're trying to do is to try and isolate the cheeky prints so that they don't get pollinated by other squash and pumpkins because they're pretty naughty when it comes to cross-pollination. So that's it. Oh, we did get another thing from Jerry 
and that's these seed bonds with sunflowers. Thanks very much for those, Jerry. Again, these are going to be going into the, or they're going to be sown at the community gardens. And they are just little seed bonds. So we're going to throw them into the wildlife area and let them do their own thing there. Super. Oh, wait a minute. Successional sowings, I haven't mentioned. Our carrots that we sowed in March are not up yet. The carrots that we sowed in modules in our polytunnel in January are going to be planted out in April. Successional sowings though are important and we are going to be doing early nonce again. So another row of early nonce. So that will be about a month on from the original sowing that we did of those a few days ago. Then we have radish cherry bell. The radish that we sowed a few weeks ago in with the pea bed where our peas are growing, they are all up. They're only maybe about a centimetre up at the moment, but they're, they're up and doing fine, as are the turnips that we sowed. The peas that we sowed, all varieties of the peas that we sowed, are now well up. So that's great. They seem to have survived this cold snap pretty well. So that's about it. In fact, that is it for April. I'm going to be seeing, as I say, what is going to be planted out from the polytunnel outside in a couple of weeks. Things are generally growing really well and I will be potting on all of the brassicas in the next couple of days, fingers crossed. That's it. Thank you for watching what we're growing in April, what we're sowing in April rather. I look forward to seeing you in May with what we're sowing in May, which will be less than, than this, though there will be some important staples for us that we need to have for the winter for us to be able to have lots of greens and things like that. I hope your season is going well and I hope you can still get your allotments. Fingers crossed for most of us that will continue, though only time will tell. Keep safe. Thanks for watching. Bye.